Frio has provided a shining light. Yeah, they bounce back. So they've been inconsistent this year, the Fremantle Dockers, but they get Darcy back um, and then Jackson, who I thought was just close to the best man on the ground. They use pace on the outside. Essendon had their options earlier, had their chances. I thought they dominated for the first 15 minutes, yet they missed goal after goal, easy goals. And in this game of football, there's only one or two percent difference between most sides at the moment in the top eight. And when you miss those goals, it's never been more important. It's always been important, but right now, to be able to put scoreboard pressure on a side, which Essendon failed to do last night. Yeah, they, they were really strong as well. Their ball movement was back. They gave their forwards one-on-one -on -one opportunities inside 50. 14 marks they took inside forward 50. You would have loved playing forward for Frio, Lordo, and also their midfield got on top and had some real dominance. Yeah, so no Sam Draper for Essendon last night, and it was four goals for 28 points to zero from centre bounce stoppages, and that's where, for me, the game was won, and they weren't tough enough or strong enough, and Frio were harder, so this was a ball that needed to be won. Watch the result for it. Parish need to be harder. Brayshaw wins the footy. Ball goes inside 50. And they're really poor. It's 666. So you shouldn't be you know, being outmarked like this. But watch how the bombers give them too much time and space. This one, Sarong shoves Parish under the ball. Look at Brayshaw on merit. They were just ruthless last night, Frio. And then this. How far off do you want to be when it's a 666 rule? This one. You know, Parish goes forward of the contest. Sarong gets ball side. And again, too far off. And he marks the football. And this is the last one I want to show. This is the fourth of them. So Fremantle get the ball forward. Sarong too tough. I'll freeze it. How, how many chances do you want to know to be off your play? This is Redmond here on Frederick. So it was a lesson they were taught around the midfield there, the Bombers, last night. Welcome back. You are watching the Sunday Footy Show. It wasn't that long ago we were bemoaning the Fremantle Dockers and wondering just what the heck had gone on with them in terms of their wheels falling off. But not only are the wheels back on, they're slipping into top gear. It was a really good, good, strong win last night. Uh, the Bombers kicked the first two goals and it was all Frio from that point on. Uh, Merritt and McGrath tried hard with 29 and 27, but Luke Jackson was brilliant. Uh, Henry had his best ever game. Uh, his previous best disposals was 21. He got 32. But the Dockers' best player actually joins us. Best player last night, the best player all year has been Caleb Sarong. Thanks for joining us, Caleb. And can you take us through the week you had and how you unpacked that Giants game because you rebounded so well last night? Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Um, yeah, it was a, a tough one. It was a tough one to take. It was, um, it was probably the worst game of, the toughest and worst game I've been a part of um, with the Dockers. So, um, it's, it's sometimes it's not even the, the amount you lose, but it's the way you lose. And, and the way we played last week, we didn't value the right things. We um, we didn't do the, the things that we um, value as a team and, and make us a team we do. So that was uh, really disappointing. But during the week, um, I guess you can kind of try and find the, the silver bullet and the answer at times. And then you can kind of drive yourself crazy with trying to find the singular fix. So for us, it was just about getting back to the process and... Um, having a real mindset to get better and um, felt like the guys really embraced that during the week, which is great. So they kicked the first two goals, the Dons, that looked pretty slick and sharp, but after that, I thought you overwhelmed them with pressure. I, I haven't seen them go lateral or sideways and backwards and fumble like they did last night, so you must have been uh, wrapped with the pressure that you put on them. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a part of our game that when we're at our best, um, we're bringing, and last week it was really poor, so they... Um, I don't know, Giants had a lot more dis disposals and contested possessions than we did and they also beat us in the tackles, especially around clearance, so it was a midfield group. Um, that was something that we really wanted to get to work in and um, we've spoken all season with the, the defenders that um, when we're pressuring the ball it makes their job a lot easier, so um, we know that's our job and if we lose a clearance we need to have a lot of pressure on the footy and we know the Bombers are also they're the best team in the conference and transition the ball from their, their um, D50 to the inside 50 so we knew we were going to have our work cut out for us at 10D and we felt like we were able to somewhat limit that and um, get some looks going back the other way. I'd imagine you put a premium on clearances when you've got players like yourself, Brayshaw and Nat Five, who's come back into the side, he's played a bit of forward, played a bit of midfield but how much time do you expect him to play in there with you? Yeah, he's been great. He's building week on week. Um, he's doing a lot of work during the week um, in centre bounce and 
and stop good stuff. So I feel like even the stuff you're seeing, some of his one touch like that, um, those kind of actions you can kind of see starting to come out in his game. The, the touch is coming back. So really looking forward to seeing him continue to play in there and keep building those loads and um, keep getting better and better each week, which is done. Caleb, talk to me about Liam Henry. Lordy mentioned his 32 disposals last night, previous best 21. Pick nine in 2019. We can all see the talent that is there. Has there been a level of frustration that it hasn't all quite come together for him until this point? I think as high draft picks coming in, there's always a sense of um, wanting to rush and, and be impatient, I guess. And um, that's more so probably from an individual point of view as well as a fan and club point of view. So with Liam, um, you've always, we've always seen his talent and what he can do uh, and some of his best, best stuff. It's been about consistency and bringing in the consistency of training and habits during the week. And then that translates to game day. And he's done a lot of work in the last 12 months, especially on bringing that consistency day to day at training and um, with his with his attitude and with his application to, to getting better. And um, yeah, last night was a great four quarter performance for him. I'm really proud of the way um, he played and, and he's doing the work day to day, like I said. So it's no, no um, surprise that he's getting those results game day. And Carl, speaking of high draft picks, as you just did there, you, you drafted one in last year or recruited one in last year in, in Luke Jackson, who had a slow start to his time a, as a docker, but it's starting to come together for him right now, predominantly as a forward last night. Um, do you feel he's still only scratching the surface of, of what he could do even inside this season? Yeah, definitely. I, um, you, you don't really know what some guys are capable of until you get him in within the club and the four walls and you see him every day. And, um, what I saw in the preseason of him in, in little handball games, in small sided games, was incredible. Um, he's he's got something special from a, someone that's so tall and so big, but his ability to repeat effort and and get his hands dirty and win ground level balls is incredible. So um, yeah, he's, he's dominating as a forward at the moment, and I've got no doubt in the future he can play a lot more on ball and, and be that big body midfielder. But I think having Sean come back in as well would allow him to, to reset forward and really play to his strengths. But I think it was really quite unfair early in the year and he knew that he was going to kind of cop it a little bit. But it's, it's tough to walk into a, a new team and a new club, especially when the rest of the team is not playing that well um, and really perform. So he's just um, continuing to, to get better, like I said. But um, yeah, we, we always knew it was going to take a little bit of time, but, but credit to him. Caleb, I've got an All-Australian selector to my right and Kane Corns will be using, I think, talking about your name a fair bit, I would have thought, in the next eight to ten weeks or uh, because of what you're doing this year. 32 disposals, 10 clearances, 12 score involvements. Can I ask you around your role? So how many minutes do you go in the midfield before you need to come off or go forward? I'm just interested in how it works for you. Um, it, it's quite flexible at times, but for me, I'm usually 10 minutes at the start of the quarter and then come off and then try and run out the quarter after that. And Andy and I usually kind of <clears throat> change it up. One of us goes off at the five, one of us goes off at the 10. So um, often during the quarters um, from the first to the second, we can change it up and try to keep each other fresh. But um, we've got a lot of young guys spinning through there now, Jono and Ra Neil Erasmus and obviously Fifey and Jager. So these kind of guys, we've got a lot of numbers spinning through. So we're able to spit out to the wing and get a spell as well if we need. Caleb, uh, I think you've been over in Perth for four years now. It's a long way from Inverloch. You're still loving it? Yeah, I love it. I love it over here. It's um, the beaches, the weather. It's, it's been great. I, I've, um, I've loved my time over here. The club's been great. And I'm pretty, pretty settled over here, which is nice. The votes last night, you were the clear best on ground for mine. Uh, nine votes for you. Uh, Luke Ryan took 18 marks behind the ball. Uh, he, he was awesome as well. Luke Jackson, the best forward game that I've seen him play. And Henry for his breakout game. Yep, I reckon you nailed it, Lordo. Uh, Caleb, we're going to send this prize pack over to your way in Perth. It is the best in the business. We'll start with the J-Lab headphones, a pair of those. They pack over 70 hours of playtime thanks to J-Lab. You kind of take the Odyssey white hot versus a putter valued at $450. There's the Clutch & Co. Golf apparel, head to toe package from Clutch and Co. Also, the Callaway for golf lovers, there's the tour cap from Callaway, as well as four Travis Matthews caps to keep the whole playing group happy. The OGO bag, which Brownie, I know you love, $150 voucher for a bag of your choice at OGO. Check out the range, auogo.com. Barfridge is Australia, great supporters of ours, a custom design Barfridge. Keep your drinks cool with a fridge with your name on it. The Aquilas, premium quality footwear since 1958. Two cartons. 
tons of the fizz functional sparkling water, zero sugar and barely a calorie in sight. The Rick's Eyewear, eyewear that inspires confidence, rickseyewear.com.au. There they are, there you'll look pretty cool in those. And a meal, courtesy of our friends at Platform 28, our favourite water. pub right here in Docklands. I've always Spot. paid there, Damo, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, right. Sure. Caleb can go there next week. Uh, I think you're at Marble Stadium against the Doggies, aren't you, Caleb? Yeah, might have to head over there and have a feed. The dumplings yeah. are good. Yeah, yeah, dumplings are very, very good. And the soup. soup. And the soup yeah. can't... Luke, Luke and Ryan will love that then. Mm. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> have I paid you for that soup? Of course you haven't. I will, I will. Oh, you should course, settle yeah. that before you go yeah. away. Yeah, I will. Yeah. Do you take English pounds? <laughs> yeah. I'm All right, good, good stuff. Uh, good to see you, Caleb, and continued success. And uh, as Lordo said, you might just find yourself in an All-Australian blazer come season's end. So good on you, mate. Thanks, Chomp Chomp. <laughs> oh. yes. doing so that, well, is, that is good. That's a good oh, one. Look at him, he likes it. Just a subtle one. That's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. I'll cop it from Caleb, he's yeah, a good kid. Yeah, yeah.